Welcome to this video tutorial on using Octane Render for cell shading in Blender. Cell shading is a popular rendering technique that adds a hand-drawn look to 3D models, giving them a more cartoonish appearance. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be exploring with you how you can achieve this effect using Octane Renderer, a powerful rendering engine that's perfect for creating high-quality and visually stunning renders. So let's dive in and learn how to master cell shading with Octane Renderer in Blender. And stay tuned for the incredible final result. But if it's your first time using Octane, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Octane materials in Blender very quickly. It's also worthy of mention that you should be signed into your Octane Server Prime. I'm going to leave all the necessary links down in the video description so you can follow along smoothly. And just in case you never used Octane before, here's how you can quickly set up your scene for cell shading. First you need to switch the engine to Octane, and then go into the shading editor. Then you have to add an Octane material. In this case, let's choose Tune. And I'm going to subdivide my cube for it to become easier for you to notice the shading. You can do so as well. Now I need to manage the environment material. Simply go into the World Shader tab. And here's the environment material. Very straightforward. And it's very impressive what you can change in this material, by the way. Um, the times of day the colors, the reflection, the angles. Everything is straightforward. And once you're satisfied with your base material, you can go back into the shading editor of your object. And just in case you wanted to use one of Blender's base HDRIs, you can simply do that by adding an image texture and selecting the HDRI you want from Blender's program files. However, I'm satisfied with the environment material that I generated here in Octane. So let's go back to object shading. And the tabs that concern us the most are the Diffuse, Specular, Roughness, and Outline Thickness. The Diffuse is basically the albedo, and the Specular, it acts as a highlight to your material. As for the lighting settings, I'm going to keep them as camera and change them later to a sun lamp or a disc lamp. Now we can move on to adding color ramps to both our Diffuse and Specular. And from these color ramps, you can add more details to your shading. And if you're familiar with Eevee or have attempted it before, then the process is very similar. Except Octane has more options for you to control your character shading, as I'll be showing you next. Also, make sure to set the color ramp to constant to have better control over your shaders. As for the outline thickness, it pretty much does what it says it does. It's very straightforward. Now let's see how you can use your own custom lighting. Add a light source and select Use Nodes. This way, it's going to be recognized as a light source in Octane. Then you can control the light properties via the nodes. I'm going to add a simple sun lamp and see how it goes. Now that you have a grasp on the basics, we can move on to more complicated things, like shading characters. And here I've imported my character as an FBX into the scene, I'm going to change my base material to tune materials in the shading tab. I'm going to assign some basic materials to stand in for colors, then I'm going to add more details to each part, starting with the skin. I'm going to repeat the same process with all the elements that I have in my scene. Afterwards, I'm going to go back to center up my skin. 
Now I'm going to set my light source as tune, then I'm going to disable cast shadows in the light mode tab for more control on the outcome of my character. And now, before we start stylizing our skin, make sure you have a good base picketer and diffuse values and that you're satisfied with the settings of your light source. And things are starting to look better already. Once I have everything set up, I'm gonna start working on my character's diffuse, the skin material. I'm going to add more details to my character's skin by utilizing the ambient occlusion and the curvature of my character. First I'm going to add a curvature node and a mix node, so I can control the colors of certain parts of my character, such as the jaw and under the neck for example. This is going to add an extra layer of detail to your character overall. Also make sure to change the curvature mode to concavity to get the best results. And the results are very subtle but satisfying. And after you're done with setting up the curvature details, you're gonna move on to the ambient occlusion by adding a dirt layer. In a similar fashion to how we set up the curvature node, we're going to add a mix shader and set things up from there. And the amount that's going to be mixed is going to be determined by the dirt node. Add two RGB nodes and make sure that one is darker than the other. And I'm going to give it a warm orange color, then experiment with the strength. This could vary from character to character. Don't just copy the settings that I do here, instead you should keep your eyes on your character while you're doing so. And now that we're done setting up the curvature and ambient occlusion, we're going to multiply the results, then hook them up to our diffuse layer. And that concludes our setup to our skin material. And remember to keep your shading editor tidy. It's really easy to get confused with all the nodes all tangled up. Remember to add the final mix node and set up the amount yourself. And once you're done with the skin material, you can experiment with the lighting to get the result that you want. Now let's move on to texture in the outfit. This only needs a dirt node as there isn't much curvature, so add a dirt layer and a mix shader similar to what we did with the skin. And as for the mask, I'm going to use a curvature node to determine my albedos.
Now that I'm done setting up my character's material, I can move on to making a good background and lighting my scene. And lighting up the scene depends a lot on the specular of the material you give to your background. So experiment with smooth and sharp outlines as you see fit. And from here on out it's just compositing and post-processing. Let's take a quick render and see how it comes out. And that concludes our tutorial on how to use Octane Renderer for cell shading in Blender. I hope that you found this guide helpful in creating your own unique and visually stunning characters. Do not forget to experiment with different lighting, setups, textures to create your own unique style. Thank you for watching and happy rendering.